let's take a step back for a moment. The key parts of the previous episode were focused on building the underground passage, with ball launching devices that brought the ball back onto the playfield through vertical chimneys. After that, I also installed all the elements of the second half of the playfield, with some really interesting features. Then using steel cable ties, I came up with a system to build the targets, those bumpers that are used to increase the score. The most interesting part was actually the construction of these metal leaf springs, which I later paired with the targets using pressed rivets. They work exactly like the original ones and I had to make a lot of them. Once completed, they were mounted underneath the playfield and at that point, we could finally move on to this new episode where we'll build the ramps and the wireforms. Don't miss this seventh episode because we'll complete the entire playfield and make it fully playable just like a real pinball machine. To build the ramps, I start from a two-dimensional drawing, and behind it there's a very precise process. Everything has to be accurate down to the millimeter. I also create the holes while taking into account the size of the screw heads, even if they will be resized later. I then import everything into Fusion 360 and perform the extrusion. 1.5mm for the ramp thickness and 15mm for the height of the side walls. This is the central ramp. Of course, for each ramp, I also need to create the holes that will support the wireforms. I import the model into the slicing software and start the print for the central ramp. Now, 3D printed ramps are flat, right? Well, since designing complex spiral slopes in 3D isn't exactly easy, here's a little trick that came to me at 5 in the morning. Once positioned, the ramps don't have the right angle, but because they're made of PLA, you can simply heat them up. Just 10 seconds with a heat gun is enough to soften them and shape them into the correct form. Once cooled down, the ramp keeps the perfect slope and angle without spending hours in Fusion 360. Now the final section is perfectly parallel to the playfield, exactly how it should be. This is what the ramp looks like after heat forming and honestly it looks even better. The same process applies to the other two ramps as well, but what if we could make them even better? And also get that classic metallic sound you hear in real arcade pinball machines? So, I decided to run an experiment using an aluminum panel. First, I cut out a smaller piece. After a lot of passes, I bend it like a wire until it snaps. You could use a jigsaw, but since I have a CNC, I'll use that. It looks really good already, I just need to remove the tabs. I fit it onto the ramp because a fully plastic ramp just doesn't feel right. It's not solid aluminum, but it has its own charm. That said, this type of aluminum didn't fully convince me, so I went to the hardware store looking for a brushed steel effect panel. Here it is. It's also thinner. Let's skip the CNC process this time. Just look at this. It's a whole different story with this material. I used a minus 0.2mm offset to compensate for the deformation caused by heat bending. After trimming, it's finished and ready for the new ramp. This time, it's black. White looks good, but black. Black is on another level. Now comes the magic. Satin aluminum combined with PLA. There's no need for glue when you use extremely strong double-sided tape. You just need to be very precise with alignment because once it sticks, there's no second chance. Since the result was so good, I used the same solution for the other two ramps. Here are the aluminum bases as well. Just remove them from the holding tabs. They're there to prevent the piece from moving during the final cut. Then, a quick cleanup of the edges. Of course, the central ramp gets the same treatment. In the end, all three ramps are shaped, finished and ready to be installed. But we're not done yet. We're missing the aluminum foot plates. The one you see here was made by hand with scissors, but since I have a CNC, let's do it properly. They turned out great, and without them, the ball would jump off the ramp. They're fixed with two tiny M2 screws and a nut. Not only do they look great, they also improve ball flow, just like in original pinball machines, and of course this has to be done on all three ramps. The third ramp is finished with a two-color PLA bridge. Because it's very long, I made it in two sections joined by a custom-shaped aluminum profile, bonded with special double-sided tape. It's a very unique ramp, and it wasn't easy to design. 
I also added a side rail so the ball can travel the entire length safely. It's made from leftover brushed aluminum, cut and bent by hand. Now that all three ramps are done, let's move on to the suspended wire forms. How do you make the wire ramps you see in arcade pinball machines? I start from the main reference vector used to design the wire path. From that, I generate the inverse contour, the guides where the brass rods will sit. Everything is built from this master line. I also create the empty zones for the joints, export everything into Fusion and build the final jig with extrusions and cuts. Then I print it. Luckily, this one fits on the print bed without splitting it. Here's the finished part. Flawless, as always, thanks to my Bamboo Lab. For the longest wire form, I had to split the jig into two prints because of its size. The wire forms are made using two brass rods, 2.4mm in diameter. The guides are so precise that you just slide the rods in and they naturally take the perfect shape. Before bending and inserting them, the rods must be polished with polishing compound. This removes oxidation and makes soldering much easier. Otherwise, the solder won't stick properly. Once both rods are in place, I secure them gradually using small aluminum plates so they don't pop out. Then I lock the final section and trim the excess rod. But how do you connect the two parallel rails together? Here's a DIY trick. You need a diameter slightly smaller than the real size to account for elasticity. This hole saw is perfect. I wrap the rod around it like a spring. Once done, I cut it roughly in half to create many small rings. I make plenty of them since there are three wire forms in total. The key is to straighten the rings and flatten the cut ends using a small DIY vertical grinder. After soldering, this would be much harder to do. Once the half rings are ready, I insert them from below into the dedicated slots. They fit perfectly. Just tighten the screw to lock them in position. Now it's time to solder. This isn't easy because the material dissipates heat very quickly. You need to preheat the area before applying solder. When the temperature is right, the solder flows on its own. Use a heat bridge to speed things up, otherwise it will take 4 times longer. After soldering the last ring, I disassemble everything and remove the wire form. Even if it's not perfectly identical to the jig, a small adjustment fixes it. Let's see if the ball rolls. Yes, that's it. It works. Now we move on to part 2, the side rails. They're essential to prevent the ball from falling at high speed. Since they're short and not continuous, I can bend them by hand. This is probably the hardest part because there are no machines involved. But the satisfaction is much greater. Manual work is always the most rewarding. And look at this. Every proper pinball machine needs wire forms. This one has four. After trimming the excess, the result is clean and precise. Now the second wire form, this one is made from a single piece. Since it's shorter, it fits perfectly on my bamboo printer. The soldering technique is the same, but this time everything is done directly on the jig. Absolutely perfect. Even better than the first one. Finally, the last and shortest wire form. Same technique, but without press fitting the rods. I pre bend them manually to avoid spring back after soldering. This one turned out perfect as well.
Then I add small brackets to fix the wireforms to the playfield, aligned with the screw positions. Now it's time to build the animated back panel. I designed a space themed background with spaceships and a futuristic city. On this base, I created a grid where each square corresponds to an LED. For the diffuser, I used a white polycarbonate sheet, but a 3D print would also work. Then I build a wooden base to mount the LEDs. I use a programmable RGB LED strip mounted on this support. With the laser, I engrave the exact channels where the strips go. I cut the strips to length and place them in their slots. Be careful, they have a direction marked by an arrow. I solder the three wires, signal and power, and make sure the orientation is correct. Before assembling everything, I test it. Perfect, it works flawlessly. The effects are controlled by an Arduino Nano mounted on a custom plexiglass support I designed. After the final test, after the final test, here's how the color logic works. With the polycarbonate panel, the effect is much more pronounced thanks to better light diffusion. Now I apply a graphic sticker. For the moment, it's printed on regular paper, but the final version will be on glossy adhesive vinyl, with a much more realistic effect. The difference is huge. It almost looks like a real display, animated space background, LED towers with supercar style effects, lightning and illuminated ships, a city that truly comes alive. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the very first time, you're about to witness the gameplay of my pinball machine with my real voice, no AI. Game start. Here I am. I'll finish this video using my real voice. So you can tell me which one you prefer compared to my AI voice clone. And don't miss the next episode. I build the cabinet, activate the key card left and right, and add the full lightning. With a score display that will show not only the score, but also arcade style mini games for the super jackpot. There will also be a digital level with a gyroscope. And the entire playfield graphics will follow a space theme. If you like this project, support this video. Like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Take care.